Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another video. Today's video is going to be the position 4 tier list for patch 7.32b, and just like I said in the other videos, you know, there might be a new patch out uh, before TI, but unless it comes this week, I really don't expect it, and if it does come, I don't think it's going to change the meta drastically. Probably just going to be nerfs to some broken heroes. Otherwise, it's probably going to be relatively the same and then as always before i jump into it i always like to say i get my data from the trends tab you know dota 2 pro tracker dota buff all the statistics from pubs and then in dota 2 pro tracker all of the high mmr pubs and the pro player pubs and i also look at the heroes that were picked and banned and all that kind of stuff in the recent qualifiers or the recent tournaments so the qualifier for ti or the qualifiers for ti in each region just ended so i looked at all those games as well so Without further ado, let's get into the position for tier list. And in the S tier, to start, we have Tiny as an S tier 4 position. This hero has been pretty good as a 4 position and a mid for, like, a long time now. I think it was obviously really good as a KRE maybe 6 months ago. Then they nerfed that, and when they nerfed that, they kind of changed some of the things about the hero to make it more viable as a mid and a 4 position. And now this is kind of where this hero has been staying, like, for a while. It's kind of just been a staple of the position for a long time. Um, or at least since they changed it, and it really hasn't fallen off. They haven't really nerfed it or changed it too much. It's still pretty viable, pretty good. You can have a lot of impact. You're still doing insane damage with your avalanche and your toss, and I think the big thing is that, so if you didn't know, avalanche back in the day used to be like a consistent stun. Like, it was just like you got stunned, and that was it. Like, it was, if you got stunned with it, you were stunned forever, and, uh, not forever, but for the full duration, and then you could toss in the middle of it, and your, your guy kind of just, like, sat there and stood still, and then they changed it to be, like, a kind of periodical, like, or not periodical, like, a, a, there's a period of, um, stunning, and then there's another period of not being stunned, like, it kind of just happens over a wave, like, a bunch of little waves that happen, like, consistently, and so, the reason why that change is important is because when they changed it to be like that, that means Puck and other heroes that have some kind of these instant cast like phase shift or anything else, even BKB, you can get a spell or uh, an item off like in between the little avalanche ticks, basically. Well, then recently they changed it back to being consistent. So even though it's sort of the, the damage comes out in the same kind of way as it did before where the ticks happen, now the ticks are like basically right next to each other. So there's no intermediate period of not being stunned where you can get off BKB or phase shift or something like that. And since they did that, this hero has been viable and I think it pretty much will stay viable unless they nerf it like really hard, change the avalanche back to what it was, or you know, like I said, nerf it hard in some other way, make the damage really bad, you know, make it terrible like move speed wise, stat wise, something else. They just need to make the hero bad in some other way to make up for that because it's a really long like stun and it does insane damage with the toss you can just never count it out like if you get an avalanche on somebody and then toss them it's insane plus the toss ability to jump in and toss somebody back um to into your team and just pick somebody off it's like a bat rider it's like anything like that like a um like a magnus skewer or a magnus horn toss anything like that you're just never going to be able to count that ability out to just disrupt team fights and get all, get pick offs off so that's pretty much tiny next we're going to look at marcy marcy far and away one of the best heroes uh, this patch, and people were kind of questioning whether or not this hero was going to be viable after they changed how the hero works. I mean, all the spells are basically the same. The real thing that they did is they changed the stun to be, and the slow to be on different skills. Um, so basically, Dispose used to be the stun, and Rebound used to be the slow, and now they just made Rebound the stun and Dispose the slow. And I think this is a really good change, because this is kind of what they did to Earth Spirit. If, if you didn't know that, Earth Spirit has the roll, which is the stun, and the kick, which is the slow, and they, it actually used to be reversed. And then they changed it, it made the hero more kind of like balanced, because it was completely broken in the past. I think it was broken before, obviously it's not as good now. And so people were wondering, okay, did this make the hero, like this kill the hero? I don't think it killed the hero, and obviously, I think... I was predicting that it didn't kill the hero. I thought it would be pretty good, but just not as broken. And I definitely think that's the case. It doesn't feel as insane to deal with. Like, it still feels really good, though, but it's not as annoying to deal with. But if you are a good Marcy player, you can hit your stun and you can cause a lot of chaos. Plus, I think they changed some other things. This hero feels a lot more like a four position that transitions into, like, a, a fourth core with the ultimate and how you can do a ton of damage. You can buy BKB and stuff like that. So... Even though the hero has changed slightly, it's still very good, dominates games, very good initiation, you know, escapability, giving that move speed to your teammates, all that kind of stuff. Next, we have Undying. So, 
If you watch the uh, three position, the off lane tier list that I did, uh, that I released yesterday, basically Undying was S tier, I believe, and Undying is also S tier as a support, as a forward position. This hero is absolutely broken. I think it's actually stronger as an off lane um, core right now because you get all that farm and you're just able to disrupt fights and be insane, be super tanky. But still, as a, as a support, it's just as good. I mean, you don't necessarily even really need items on this hero. You kind of just need levels. And once you have your levels, you're just ridiculous. Um, Tombstone does the same thing it always has. Uh, and now your decay is way better and your ultimate has been buffed like in the last six months or so to be even better. So this hero is just absolutely ridiculous. Honestly, look forward to Undying to be one of the best supports. Picked or banned like every game in TI. Like this, I think this hero is just going to be like the top tier hero. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe like the meta will develop in a way where Tombstone's not as good and this hero doesn't feel strong, but I just have a feeling Undying is going to be top tier support. Maybe even though like in pubs, it's a really good off lane, maybe it won't be great as an offlaner in TI, but I think as a support, it's definitely going to be great. Um, so yeah, and the main thing they really changed was just Decay. Decay is just broken now. It just does insane damage. You keep the health. It's just it's just ridiculous. It feels so crazy in lane. Like, you just lose all of your HP, and it does so much damage. It, it feels insane. Now, next we have Earthshaker. Earthshaker is one of these heroes that... It always feels like Earthshaker is either really good or really bad. It's, like, just not viable at all and sucks for whatever reason because the problem with this hero is in the laning stage. Like, what do you really do in the laning stage? It's, like, kind of awkward. Like, you don't trade super well. Your spells cost a lot of mana. And then if you can't use a lot of your spells and you can't, like, roam or do something like that, it just feels awkward. But I think the biggest thing is that now mid is all about, like, dominating the lane um, and, like, pressuring the tower and stuff. So Earthshaker is really, really good at rotating on the mid lane and helping the mid laner out with like getting kills and stuff. So that's the first thing. And then I also think that a lot of these off laners like Beastmaster and some of these other good off laners are either like ranged off laners that can dominate the lane and then you don't have to really babysit them or they're like Beastmaster, these kind of summons heroes that once they get to a certain point in the lane, they can kind of solo it or take the tower really early and then you can leave. So I think that just that generally benefits Earthshaker. And because of that, he's just like OP. Like when he's good, he's super OP. I think the other big thing is that it's been this way for a while, but obviously you need your blink dagger. But I think the shard now gives this hero a viable path to not just like have to get blink on the four position early or else you're useless. Like even if you don't have that much impact early or like you haven't got a lot of net worth or kills, you can you get the shard instead of the blink and then you can have good impact because you're stunning from fog, you're stunning from far away, and then you're kind of stunning them again. And that chains, uh, chain disable with your fissure and then also using your totem on top of it, that, that is significant. It's actually really, really good. Um, so just keep that in mind. I think that's one of the biggest things with this hero. Um, right now. And then once you do get your Blink Dagger, you can just have insane impact from the four position. And then lastly, we, here we have Marana. This is just like a classic four position. It's kind of the main position that Marana plays these days. And I'm not so sure about like, you know, pro meta stuff where is this hero really going to be viable in the pros? I'm not 100% sure. But the fact that you can arrow creeps and farm if, you know, get your own farm that that way. They also changed the Star Storm to be a little bit more reliable, a little bit better for damage early on. And then also, I just think, especially in pubs, this ultimate is so annoying. Like, I just know whenever I play against a Marana, I always just get so mad because everybody has to buy dust. They get just like free smokes all the time. So annoying because you never know where anybody is on the map half the time. And this hero can just be super annoying. So even if it's not S tier in like pro meta, which I think it might even be in the pro meta. I think it's like S tier in pubs right now, just based on how the hero works and how you can just get this free smoke ability and you actually do a ton of damage and you have, you know, insane escape ability. It's so hard to kill you. Just all these things make this hero really good if you're able to play it. If you have any setup for Sacred Arrow as well, like the hero's just godlike. So that is S tier for the four position. A lot of good heroes. This is just kind of how the support tier lists usually end up is it doesn't really seem like there's far and away one hero that's way better or like a couple heroes that are way better it's a little bit more even in the support realm i think it's just kind of like naturally how support goes and then we move to a tier here i think any of these heroes like at any moment in ti you know if if something is figured out or the meta shifts a little bit um, we can see that uh, some of these heroes might actually go up to S and some of the S tier heroes might go back down to like A or something like that. There's always that possibility. And one of the biggest heroes that I think that could happen with is Nyx Assassin. I think this hero is just, it's, I think it's similar to Earthshaker. It just feels like Nyx Assassin is either, either completely broken against the heroes that are good in the game in the uh, meta, or it's just like terrible and you feel like it does nothing. Because it ha kind of has a similar uh, problem with Earthshaker is that it, like in the laning stage, what do you really do? I mean, you can like, you know, use your stun, but, like, you just stun a guy, and then what do you just, like, 
I don't really think you're scared of a Nyx assassin coming up and just like poking you, right? It just feels weird. So, um, again, the fact that he can roam onto mid, the fact that there's, you know, has a similar thing with Earthshaker where you just don't really need to be in your lane harassing and doing all this crazy stuff. I think that really benefits this hero. And then later on in the game, if you get through the laning stage, you can have impact early. The hero is just super annoying. Scouts really well. Um, Spike Carapace is always super good against a ton of different kinds of heroes. Like, Clinks is good. And this hero is amazing against Clinks because Clinks, the big thing about him is his Q. Um, obviously, when you use your Q and you're trying to do a bunch of damage in that duration, if you hit uh, with the Maelstrom procs or with the Q directly, a Spike Carapace in the beginning, well, that spells down cooldown. That's like your main damage source. So heroes like that that rely on some kind of... Um, AoE spell or something that's uncontrollable, that's not single target to do damage, Nyx Assassin just counters them straight up. Uh, and it just feels so annoying to play against this hero. It just I've played against it in pubs a bunch of times, and if they can get out of the laning stage without being completely useless, it feels broken. Hoodwink, I don't think there's anything super special about Hoodwink. I think Hoodwink is like... I, I don't know. I think Hoodwink's kind of like your budget Marana in a way. I don't know. I, I, it just feels like weird in that way. Like you kind of are this weird uh, four position that is like a carry. Um, you kind of want to transition into more of like damage items and you do a lot of damage with all of your spells. Obviously you have a good stun, but you mainly are damage and like your ultimate is a break. I think that's the biggest thing. This hero is like mainly damage. And I almost like play this hero like you're a carry from the four position in a way. Um, but I think it's very viable, especially in pubs. If you know how to play this hero, you can get get uh, your stuns pretty, like, reliably, and you know how to aim your ultimate, and you need, they need a break, like, you need to break somebody on the enemy team, it can be very, very good. Also goes through, like, Slark spells, it's really good against Slark, um, against a lot of these heroes that uh, are popular in the meta right now. Tusk, I think, has just been overall good and kind of on the rise recently. This hero is obviously a lane dominator at times, can be super annoying to lane against with, uh, with some heroes that like to, you know, a lot of these melee heroes that like to be aggressive or like to stay in their lane, sometimes it's very hard to do that against Tusk. He's also really good at roaming on mid, and then later on in the game, if he gets Blink Dagger and he can, like, get potentially ags and kick people back, it's like, you can never underestimate something like Tiny Toss or, like, that kick from Tusk. You can just never underestimate a positioning spell like that. So very good right now. If you're a good Tusk player, I think you can have insane impact from the forward position. Rubick, I'm going to put Rubick up here, even though I don't often suggest people pick Rubick in lower MMRs. Um, he's kind of a weird one to place because honestly, it just feels like unless you're a really good Rubick player or unless you have teammates or you know that know how to play around Rubick and Rubick, you can sit in the back and steal Black Hole and do all that kind of stuff, steal Bane's Grip or something like that. Um, unless you're really good at doing that, I don't think Rubick is the best. But overall, I'm just going to make this tier list in general. I'm not going to put him lower because he is a very good uh, hero right now. And, you know, Heroes that have good ultimates to steal, like Black Hole, like Bane Grip, uh, they are popular right now. So because of that, I think Rubik is very, very good, even though I don't necessarily recommend people at lower MMRs play him. And then lastly for A tier, we have Shadow Shaman. Shadow Shaman was completely broken, I think, a couple patches ago when he could like solo Roche at like, you know, five minutes or whatever it was. So he's not that broken, but he still is very good. Um, I think he's kind of not fallen off, but I think people have almost forgotten about him a little bit, but I think he is still very, very viable and very good in pubs, um, and he still can help you take Roche really well, he can push towers, like, solo almost, and if you get to the late game with this hero, like, you will always be threatening high ground, like, you will be able to threaten, um, backdoor pushes in a way, I mean, backdoor's not as good now, but, like, you know, if, if the enemy loses one fight and you have Ags or something like that, Ags Refresher, a fresher shard from Roche, this hero is absolutely ridiculous as a, as a support, so scales really well. And those stuns, I mean, those long duration stuns can't be underestimated. So Shadow Shaman, pretty good. Next, we'll go to B tier. B tier, we first have Zeus here. So Zeus, last patch, very good. Probably one of the best heroes, one of the best mids, and a really, really good support that was super viable, all about damage. Now, it's not as good. It's just changed a little bit, obviously not as good as a mid because of the farming, and just not as good overall in general because they nerfed it uh, slightly. I think they nerfed the jump and some of the stuff that the jump does. Um, even though it's still a good mobility spell, it's just not as good as it once was. So it's still definitely viable, but just, yeah, like I said, not nearly as good. Nothing super different about the hero. It's just not, all with the numbers and how it farms, it's not as OP as it once was. Earth Spirit, if you're a good Earth Spirit player, he's like middle of the road, middle of the pack, viable, decent, does all Earth Spirit things. The big problem with this hero is he doesn't farm at all, so you constantly have to be um, having impact in the game, like ganking, rolling in, picking people off, getting people out of position, being constantly annoying. And if, you know, if that doesn't happen, if your team doesn't play around you, you can feel really bad to be an Earth Spirit. But because, like I said, with the mid, with some of these other heroes like Nyx, like Earthshaker, because mid doesn't farm, just pressures a lot, or ganks with you, that's why Earth Spirit is really good um, right now, or at least semi-viable if you know how to play him. 
tree and protector not really changed or you know there's nothing super different about tree right now just still a very strong laner and obviously is really good at protecting towers um i think the biggest thing about this hero is a few patches ago maybe it was the most recent patch but i think it was a couple patches ago they changed how living armor works and i think living armor is like pretty op right now um it just feels like it, it he it's so hard to push against it like before i think you would heal a tower and then you could attack it a few times or you and the creeps could attack it and then the the, uh, the living armor would just disappear it's not really like that anymore now it's uh heals like for the full duration and it just gives extra armor as well to the tower and it feels really really hard to push into this hero with um living armor um in general so i think that's the biggest thing that buffed this hero and then obviously the fact that i mean any ultimate that pierces bkb like that i think is you can never really underestimate and that can always be good in the late game then we have Clockwork. Look for Clockwork to be on the rise, to be a really strong hero. Um, probably more as an offlaner, I would say, because the big thing that they changed is the Ags, and I think the Ags is potentially broken. Um, so obviously, as a four position, you're not going to get that Ags as quickly. But if you could get that Ags, this hero is really good. Obviously, it can be a very, very good matchup against a lot of five positions. You know, you can run them down with your Battery Assault. Um, you can obviously give Vision of Roche with your... Uh, with your uh, rocket flare, you can push waves with a rocket flare, you can have insane initiation impact. So this hero is really, really good. It just kind of like a lot of other heroes doesn't farm super well, although they did improve that um, with letting your battery salt do like double damage to creeps, I think, in one of the recent patches. So it does it, it, it does kind of farm a little bit now, but it's very similar to Earth Spear in that it just doesn't farm very fast despite that buff. Um, so if you're not having constant impact around the map, you're not really doing much and then you'll fall off, you don't get your items, that kind of thing. You just feel like a hookshot bot at that time. You just press R and that's all you do later in the game if you don't have your items. Next we have Dawnbreaker. Dawnbreaker just kind of middle of the road um, support. Overall, this hero was nerfed a little bit, but not a lot. I just think as a support, it kind of has fallen off a bit. People aren't picking it as much. I think this hero is more of a core. And then since it got nerfed, it just feels like it was only really played as, as a support because it was just so broken. And now because it's more like actually balanced... People are just not picking it as a support as much. Although I still think it is viable, it's just not as popular, and because it's not as popular, it's kind of fallen off. And uh, I, like I said, I think you can still pick it, but it's just not great. Enigma, super greedy. Because Enigma is really good as an offlaner, and in general right now, it's B tier, so it's pickable, it's viable. Probably more of a pro niche thing if they really want to get greedy with it. But uh, And you can still do it in pubs if you're really a good Enigma player and you're very greedy. But again, I'm going to say it again, greedy. Greedy, 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 greedy. That's what this hero is, and if you can get away with it, it's really good, but otherwise, uh, you might just lose the game in the first 20 minutes. Next, we have C tier. So a lot of these heroes have very big weaknesses in one way or another. So Skywrath, all about damage, but if you can't harass people and kill them and push them out of lane, it feels very bad. I mean, a lot of these heroes that are popular as carries and stuff are pretty strong laners, or at least like to stay in the lane for a long period of time. And so if you can't kick them out and take the tower quickly, and you don't really have the ability to do that, um, on, I mean, you have the ability to do that in Skywrath, Sky Wrath, but if you can't do that with all of your spells and all of your damage, um, like let's say you're playing against a Slark and obviously you can annoy him early, but then, you know, once he hits six, like, what are you really going to do? You're just kind of going to waste mana by chucking spells at him, so it can be very annoying. So, it's all about matchups, I think, with this hero. All about damage, but if you can't get those items, get that damage and have an impact with that, it can just be, it feels useless. Phoenix, very good as a, just, you know, team fight hero. Obviously, very good paired up with Chronosphere, so whether, you know, on your own team or against that, you know, if you can egg when the enemy chronos or if you have a void on your team and there's chronos, so it's very good in that way. So even though uh, void is really good right now, I still don't think Phoenix is all that great. There's just obvious weaknesses with the hero because there's no stun, you know, the landing stage is a little bit awkward. You kind of just fire, you just have fire spirits, you throw them at people and then, you know, what else do you do? You don't really do that much. You're also not really like ganking mid lane all that much. It's just a very awkward hero. If you can get to the late game, if you can get your items, if you can have impact, it feels great. But some games, it just feels absolutely useless. Like you just click egg and then you just, you know, you just die in the egg. It just, it's like a really all or nothing hero, I think. And if you know how to play Phoenix and you're good at it, it can be effective, but otherwise, not that great. So Snapfire, I put in C tier, even though personally, I actually really like Snapfire. Probably one of my favorite supports, one of my go-to to, uh, supports to play in roll queue. I think this hero does a lot. It has, you can get farm 
with some of your abilities. You have a little bit of minus armor pushing power. You have a mobility spell that can also initiate. You have a good long range magic damage ultimate. I think this hero does a little bit of everything, but for whatever reason, this hero is almost like Mars in a way where it always feels viable, but for some reason, the win rate is always dog shit. So <laughs> I put it down here because the win rate is so bad, but I think it is kind of like, I think for a while it was broken and it was getting picked all the time, just like Mars where it just, they kept nerfing it, but it just kept getting picked. Now I think, um, I think it's still viable. Look for it to be on the upswing, especially with the new shard. I think the old shard was good. The new shard is kind of interesting though. Um, it, it takes away a stun, but I think does a little bit more damage, makes your cookie a little bit more viable into the later portion of the game. So look for that. It also allows you to farm a little bit more as well. So um, look for that to be a part of the hero. And the real reason I like this hero is because it offers, like I said, a little bit of everything. Stuns, you can farm, you can do everything from the four positions. So that's why I really like it. Um, that is Snapfire. Next, we will look at Dark Willow. So Dark Willow is a very weird four position hero in that like if you're a Dark Hero, Dark Willow uh, player, if you know how to play this hero, you can be very, very good and dominate games. But it's always kind of an awkward run. I almost compare it a little bit to Phoenix or like Skywrath Mage in this way of like, at least you maybe have a stun, you know, and you have a root. So you're not as just full damage as these guys are full team fight. So, but you know, the root is not necessarily reliable, pretty easy to get out of and then the stun is like super low like you you can see it coming like it's not very reliable in that way either you can see it coming you can back off and then otherwise this hero is just all about damage and team fight um so if you can get away with that if you can have good impact with it if you're like a phoenix player if you're a dark willow player you can do well but otherwise not super viable techies on the other hand obviously all about damage all about team fight i actually think people just underrate this hero for whatever reason I just don't see a lot of it in pubs and I don't see many people playing it, but dude, sometimes I see this hero in pubs whenever I do and it is doing insane damage. It is like killing 3000 HP heroes full to zero or close to it. You know, that initiation with the stun and the silence and then the disarm that, you know, if they ever click you and even the, you know, red mines you can place around if you're winning, if you're winning the game and you enter the enemy or you take over the enemy jungle and you start placing these red mines all over the place, it's so annoying for the enemy to go out. Yeah, they're not maybe going to die um, unless they run through all of them, but like, it's so annoying for them. You know, you take a team fight around these red mines, you're team fighting, you're not really worrying about the red mines, you're just taking insane damage while you're trying to chase people down and stuff. I think this hero is way better than people like give it credit for, but it's just not winning. I think Maybe it's just because it's more offensive. It's very similar, I think, to Dark Willow, to Phoenix, to Skywrath, where it's all offense. It's all about, you know, jumping in, stunning, silencing, doing insane damage. And if you need a support that's more of a stunner, more something something more consistent and reliable, then I think that's where Techies has a problem. It's all about offense. It's kind of all or nothing. And you see, that's a lot of these heroes, a lot of all or nothing down here. Venomancer, very similar. No stun. Just all about harassment, being super annoying, you know, greedy. I think this is like the worst version of Enigma in a way. Obviously, they don't have these big team fight. You know, it's not black hole, but the ultimate is very significant, can really win team fights and uh, cause people to run away. But it's really super greedy because you have no stun. And if you're lacking a stun at your four position and you're just playing Veno 4, it, sometimes it can just feel absolutely dog shit. But yeah, if you get if you get Gale onto some enemies in the lane, you can just dominate lanes, push lanes, kill them. You can be another like off laner with with insane impact and do insane damage in the game. Bounty, another kind of really all or nothing hero. If you can afford to run in and Janata people and steal money in the early game and take it over and, and harass the enemy five and harass the enemy carry and ruin their lane and then get a good early ags or some good early item timings, you become another core, you become another three position and you can just destroy the game, track everybody, kill. It's all about snowballing. And if again, if you can't do that, it just feels like, okay, what are you doing? You're just sitting in the back kind of like trying to press R on people. And then sometimes you like, you know, you track somebody, they see you or they know you track them and then they just jump on you and you die so again you have to be like winning you have to be snowballing you have to be able to run in and hit people and if you can't you just feel honestly like a track bot yeah track is okay but it's just really not going to win you the game you're just pretty much useless if that's all you're doing and then pudge just better all around at pretty much every position but four except for five <laughs> so it's not a five hero it's probably f tier in my five list um, it is a viable somewhat viable four position but it's really just better as a core right now Probably best is carry, then off lane, then mid, 
Um, and just as a support, it's not great because you want items on this hero. The whole reason why this hero is good is because you can get your ags, um, and then you can block all that damage with your new passive. But if you can't do that, which you don't really do that with a forward position, it's still all about just hooking people out of, you know, out of position. And that's not really reliable Then it's not that great. And then especially, you know, in the laning stage, you just do absolutely nothing as usual. You just sit in the trees, try to hook people. And if it doesn't work, oh, well, maybe go hook a, uh, a, a big camp or something like that. So that's Pudge. You can see all the C-tier heroes pretty much just, it's like all or nothing, snowball, win the game, or just do nothing in the game. Next, we have D-tier. A lot of these heroes are like heroes that have either, either fallen off like Enchantress and Io. So these two heroes are, you know, pro meta picks that I think have fallen off a lot, even in the pros. And then in pubs, I just don't recommend picking them in general, unless you really know what you're doing. Um, unless you're a really good Enchantress or Io player, like I just don't think you should pick these heroes. And then the next two are Monkey King and Wind Ranger. Um, they were good at one time, but you're kind of picking a carry from the support position. And obviously Wind Ranger was more of a five when Seb was playing it, but then it kept getting nerfed because Seb was winning with it. So now I think it's just really not good anymore. Uh, like you're pretty much just a shard. That's all you do is you just stun people and then have your shard with your gale force or whatever. And they've just made this hero worse and worse because of how good it was at the majors um, and how much Seb was winning with it. Um, Spirit Breaker. I think Spirit Breaker is a little bit better than D maybe personally, but um, I can see I, I see it and I can feel the impact of it in some games, but it's just not as good as it once was when it was broken. And uh, it is kind of an all or nothing hero as well. Like if, you, if you're not around, if you're not charging people, it's a little bit like Clockwork or Earth Spirit, but like a worse version. It's like if you're just not like having tons of impact, you don't farm. So you just have to constantly be charging people off cooldown. And if you can't do that for whatever reason, like they don't have good charge targets or they're not showing and they're just five man balling, like you just do nothing, honestly, and you get no farm. It's probably actually more of an off laner these days than it is as a four position elder titan not completely f tier like it has been but just still not good we'll see if it comes back this uh, ti but i, don't, I have a feeling it isn't going to um, because they haven't buffed it enough this hero is either s or like fd tier pretty much all the time just does normal elder titan things but unless you're becoming that like fourth core where you're just like right clicking people down like stapling them to death like you're just you just do nothing kind of and then Venge, I feel like this hero is more of a 5, just doesn't really feel good as a 4. This hero is all about control and swapping and all that kind of stuff. It can be very annoying in the right game, but, uh, and it does have a stun, don't get me wrong, but you really need ags on this hero. And so, like, if you can't farm or you're not snowballing, like, kind of like the other C tier heroes, if you're not snowballing and able to get that farm and get that ags, uh, you feel, so, it feels so bad, because you just kind of swap somebody in, you die, you press stun, and that's all you do, um, so if you have ags, you're able to like, they don't really want to kill you and it's a waste of time for them to kill you and you're pretty tanky. But if you don't have it, it's all about whether or not you can get that eggs. And again, can't really farm very fast so you don't get it too much. And then lastly, we have all the F tier heroes. These are all heroes that either were once good and nerfed a lot or just like, they just don't play the role anymore. So Weaver, they changed him a bunch and he's just terrible now as a forward position. I just don't think he's viable where he was once broken. Keeper of the Light, completely fallen off as a mid and as a support. This hero just isn't played anymore because, you know, the mid lane was changed. And now they nerfed the hero a little bit too. So it's just, I don't think it's viable with the way the meta is wor um, working. Lion is just a terrible hero all around, I think. I mean, I think you can still pick him in pubs. Don't get me wrong. He has a hex and a stun, but it's just, you know, it's just like a worse Shadow Shaman, to be honest, in a lot of ways. Lena, more of a core. I still don't really think Lena 4 is viable. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I just still think this hero is bad as a 4. I've seen people try to play it, but I just haven't seen it have much success. Um, it feels just like a way worse version of any of these C-tier greedy heroes like I was talking about before. Same thing with Ricky. Ricky is just like a core that you're trying to play from the 4 position. It's like the same thing. It's just super greedy, but works even less than a lot of these heroes. And then Sniper, exact same thing ultra greedy you're playing like carry from the four position and obviously you might buy ags but it's like unless you're doing that you just you just have no impact um i mean you, i think you could potentially i think there is a build potentially where you could make this hero work but i think it's just better as a carry or a mid right now so that is my four position tier list for patch 7.32b and as always guys if you like the video like comment subscribe all of those kinds of things if you want to support these videos and see more into the future uh, consider going to my patreon and signing up there i also offer coaching there as well so as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video